we're going to go through some basic settings of the oscilloscope, which includes vertical, volts per division, horizontal, time per division, trigger, the probe, and the preset. All these things will be demoed in this short example. So to begin with, we have to set up the probe. And to do that, you come over to here, and our probes actually have a switch on them, and the switch is set to times 10. So we have to verify that in software, we're using times 10, and we are here. Okay, once you've done that, you can close that menu by clicking this button. The next thing that we'll want to do is to change, if required, the volts per division. And you can do it in a few different ways. One of them is to click this box, go to menu, and in the menu, you'll see a vertical scale. I can click that box or double click it and set it for two volts and then hit enter. Or you can use the dial. So you come over to here where it says scale and uh, this will be the vertical section. And if I turn it counterclockwise, it's increasing or decreasing. Sorry, if I go counterclockwise, I'm getting more volts per centimeter. Clockwise, fewer volts per centimeter. So that's the voltage setting. If I want to set the, <clears throat> the horizontal, which represents the time per division, I can close this menu, come up here, and it gives me the possibility of choosing between two milliseconds or, or other times, okay? So let's go to 500, and it selects 500 microseconds per division. The other way that I can do this is to come over to the horizontal and there's a knob here and if I turn that knob back and forth I'm changing the time per division and you typically want somewhere between two to seven cycles on the screen okay that might be a little low there so let's go back to here that gives us about one two three about six cycles so that's fine Okay, so <clears throat> the next thing that you want to do is to set the trigger. And what happens if it's not triggered, and I'll show you what happens, is if I click on the TL, which stands for trigger level, and move it up here, you'll see that the waveform isn't frozen in place. It's not captured. So what we have to do is to make sure that the trigger level is in between the minimum and maximum level, somewhere in between those two levels. The easiest way to set the trigger level for a digital signal is to just click on the levels button and it puts it right in the center. So that makes it very easy to do. You can also adjust the level in different ways. One way, as I said, is just moving it up and down. The other way is to click on the, or double click on the levels or, or trigger. I think it's the trigger that will give you a menu and in that menu, you can choose whatever voltage you want. Uh, and I don't want 22. I think something is on my keyboard. Yes. So let's just put two and then enter. And then I get two volts. And then, as I said, I can close the menu and move this up and down manually. The last thing is that when you first start up the oscilloscope, you may have settings there that you're not expecting. And that might happen because you've clicked on the preset or somebody else has done that. If I do that, I find that's a very useful setting coming up to the scope for the first time because someone else may have changed a lot of different settings. So I wanna come back to some initial settings. So it starts off with channel zero. And I know the signal was TTL and I know the period was about two milliseconds. So I want to have the probe set to 10 to 1. It is already that way. I want to, and I, if I had to change it, I would just come up here, close this menu. And I want to change the volts per centimeter to 2 volts per centimeter. So I come up to this dial and I turn it. I turn it counterclockwise until I get 2 volts per centimeter but you'll see that the trigger level is not in the right place. And the easiest way to fix that trigger level is just to press that levels button. So now it's in the center, but we still have a problem in that we're not getting between three and seven waveforms on the screen. So I have to now come over to the scale button for horizontal. 
so this button and we're going to turn it until we have eh, between three and seven so that looks like a reasonable number there and i believe that's back to where we were all right and if you wanted to annotate this screen i can just click on the annotations type my text here and just write arduino pulse with modulation and then hit enter so just reviewing the time per division is down at the bottom here so this is our trigger point right in the center and uh, one division after that trigger point would be one millisecond two and so on and across the screen there are 10 divisions vertically 10 divisions horizontally 10 divisions so at one millisecond per division you're seeing uh, 10 milliseconds across the screen and at two volts per division you're seeing 20 volts vertically in this video we'll use some of the different measuring tools available on this scope so to do that you start off by going to this button and pressing measure and it brings up this tool. Now the first thing to notice here is measuring place. Measuring place indicates where near this bottom area the measurement will be placed. So this might be measurement one, over here two, over here three, and so on. There are six different measuring places and six different measurements that we can make. So for this waveform, we're going to measure the frequency, the period, the high time, and the duty cycle. So that's going to be four different measurements and we're all going to be on channel one. So I'm going to start off by using measurement place one and the type of measurement. And you have basic measurements, vertical and horizontal. Okay, so these are the different types and there are many different types. So the first one, as I said, is that I want to measure the period of the signal. So I do that and down here is the period of the signal. So 2.04 milliseconds makes sense because we're at one millisecond per division and the period is going from here, falling edge here to falling edge here. And that's about uh, just a bit over two milliseconds. So we have that one measurement. The next one we wanna do is the frequency. So place two, frequency, we select that. And now we have the frequency, which is about 500 hertz. The third measurement is we wanted to measure the duty cycle, the positive duty cycle. So that's a measurement that is horizontal. So positive duty cycle right here, it's placed in the third position and it's showing me, showing me that it's about 22% and I can actually change it and it updates that information as I'm making the change. And the fourth one we wanted to include was the, the positive time. So duty cycle, that would be the positive width, which is right here. So you'll notice that you don't actually see it here. You have to either hit back or menu so that you're taking away this part of the menu. And now you have all of the measurements. So the period, the frequency, the duty cycle, and the pulse width for the positive time uh, high. So it's positive pulse width. So it's showing 520. So if I look at this here, from here to here is one millisecond. And the time high is just over one mill or just over half of that, which makes sense for our measurement. Okay, so those are some of the measurements that you can make. This is the circuit board for the low and high pass filter. The arrow shown here is the input for channel one and also connected to the generator. And on the right hand side is the output of the circuit and it's connected to channel two of the scope. In this demo, we're gonna have a look at a low pass filter 
and we're trying to determine the cutoff frequency for this low pass filter and we're going to do it using something called FFT or a spectrum analysis. But the very first thing I have to do and I always do this when I'm working with scope is click on the preset button so that we have all of the controls and settings at a known state. And then the second thing I want to do is set up the generator. So to do that, I go to generator, make sure it's set up for 250 millivolts peak to peak. And since it's a low pass filter, I want to start off with a low frequency. So that's going to be in this case, 10 or two kilohertz. Okay. So two kilohertz, 250 millivolts peak to peak. And then we want to turn on the generator. And if you want to change any of the settings, for example, the horizontal, you would click on this dial and then turn it clockwise or counterclockwise to change the amount of time per division. And it also has a button that you can press so that it's a fixed amount, or if you press it again, it's a variable amount. But I'm gonna stay with the fixed amount. So the second button you can control that signal with is the time per division, that's called scale under vertical. And I can turn that knob clockwise or counterclockwise. Right now it's at its variable setting, but here it's at its fixed setting. So I'm gonna leave it at this position. And actually this is not so important when we're using the spectrum analyzer. So let's turn on the spectrum analyzer. To do that, click FFT. Okay, and I've just done that. Now this top part shows you the time domain. This bottom part shows you the frequency domain. And since we're primarily concerned with the frequency domain, I'm gonna move this out of the way. Okay, and uh, you'll notice down here, along this axis, the horizontal axis, it's showing you frequencies, 10 megahertz, 50, 110, and so on. And that's really above with what we are working with today. And then on the left-hand side is gain in dBm, reference to one millivolt. So what I wanna do next is actually change some of these settings. Up here, I wanna start at uh, 2.86 megahertz initially, but you have to click it a second time to select 80 kilohertz. So I have my stop frequency at 80 kilohertz. My start will be at one kilohertz and that's done. And so everything's set up except we want to have better resolution on our DBMs. So I'm gonna click on this button here, but it's, I don't really have to, it's already highlighted. Come over to the yellow scale button and we wanna change that to maybe three dBm. Okay, and I have that. The other thing I wanna do is click on this button and get it so I see zero dBm near the top. I wanna see that peak value. That's good enough there. The next thing we wanna do is select the cursors because I wanna measure cursors with cursors. And I don't want vertical cursors, I want horizontal cursors. And to do that, you just press the cursor button again and type here, we wanna make sure the source is the spectrum, but the type needs to be horizontal. Once you've selected that, you click on the screen and now you have access to the cursors and I believe pressing the analysis button here will cause one of the cursors to go orange as it did over here. And I'm gonna start off by putting the number one cursor at the top. So I'm gonna to turn this, that's actually two, press that analysis button again to get one. And I'm gonna to go to the top of that waveform. So this is a low pass filter. The signal should not be attenuated here. So I'm gonna measure the maximum output signal of my filter, and that's connected to channel one. The input of my filter is connected to the generator. So the generator is producing a signal to the input. The oscilloscope is measuring that output signal. So if it's operating as a low pass filter, it should drop its output value as it go to a higher frequency. And we can check that really fast by just going to the generator and going to the frequency dial. And now we're on the uh, analysis button. It's highlighted in blue, this button here. And I'm gonna turn it clockwise. Okay, and you'll notice that it's increasing the frequency 
And as I move to the right, which means moving to a higher frequency, we're at uh, 13K, 20K, and so on. So look what happened to that signal. It's dropped down dramatically. So at 33 kilohertz, it's dropped down by, you know, around minus 1920 dB. So I'm going to go back over to the left-hand side. Oops, I hit the wrong button there. Uh, I wanted 3 dB, back to 3 dB. And now I'm going to move the frequency control because you can see it's highlighted in blue right now. So I've got to turn this dial counterclockwise and just follow the frequency. I want to get back to around 2 kilohertz. It takes a little bit of time to get there, but it does make it. And actually, the slower you turn that dial, the better precision you have. It's a unique feature for many digital scopes. Okay, so you can see it's getting smaller and smaller change for a certain amount of rotation on that knob. So we're just about at 2 kilohertz. And there we are. At 2 kilohertz, I'm getting my cursor position is measuring about minus 2.08 dBm. So what I'm going to do next is go back to the, the cursors. So I think I have to hit the cursor button because they're not in orange anymore. Now they are. It's telling me the dial on the right, this dial here, controls the two cursors. And pressing the button again will give me the second cursor control. And I'm going to put that at 3 dB lower than the first. So the first one's at minus 2, and this one's going to go to minus 5. Okay. So we want a difference of uh, minus 3 dB there. Okay, and that's it right about there. Okay, if you put the number two one on top and one underneath, you'll actually get a, a negative value. So now what I'm going to do next, and maybe let's let's do that. Okay, I want to put two on the top. Okay, and then I'm going to press it so we get number one. And we should be getting a negative value. No, it's not giving us a negative value. It's just the difference. So what I thought would work that way doesn't. So I'm just looking for a difference of minus or difference of 3 dB. And there we go. All right, so th that's the minus 3 dB point. So now what I'm going to do is adjust the frequency. So I need to go back to my generator. So I just click on the generator button and click on the frequency position so that I can now use that dial. And this is going to cause the signal to move to the right. And what I'm going to do is look for it to drop by 3 dB, which is the second marker. And I'm assuming that that's going to happen around 12.6 kilohertz approximately. We're at 7, 8, 9, and so on. Oops, I went way too far. I didn't need to move my mouse out of the way. So we're close there. So we need to go lower. I think we're about there. So that's 3 dB less at 12.8 kilohertz. Pretty close to what I expected. So 12.8 kilohertz in this case for this filter is the cutoff frequency, the corner frequency. There are, there are multiple names for the same thing. So we'll stop at this point and look at a different way to measure that cutoff frequency. So we have three different methods. Hello, we're going to look at a Bode plot of a low pass filter circuit this time on the Roden Schwartz digital oscilloscope model RTB 2004. So the very first thing you have to do is to turn on the generator. You do that by clicking this button. Once you've done that, you come over to here and turn the output on. Then you should get a signal on the scope, which we do. And now you can turn the scale dial to move it uh, 
up or down to get a higher or lower value on the screen. So we've done that. This is really not that critical for what we're going to do next. Next thing we need to do is to come over here, click on this point, and click on Bodhi Plot. And in just a second, it'll open up this screen. And uh, the very first thing I'm actually going to do, do is turn off the phase angle measurement. So you do that by clicking it twice and turn that off. The next thing you have to do is you have to specify the range of measurements you want to make. So in our case, we're going to go from one kilohertz, okay, up to a maximum of 80 kilohertz, just like you might do in the lab. Okay, one to 80 kilohertz. And then we want to have a lot of points in our measurement. So I'm going to go through uh, 200 points, just gives us better resolution and double click on that. And then basically what you do next is click on the run button and start to see the signal being produced. And as I said, this is a low pass filter. So at low frequencies, and as you can see, we're at about 1.9 kilohertz, it's passing through the signal unattenuated. But there will be a point, that's the minus three dB cutoff point, where it starts to reduce. We're not there yet. And uh, I'm not sure what to expect, but we'll see in a second. So I'm looking at the frequency and the gain down here. Okay, so we're at 10 kilohertz, and now it's starting to drop. Okay, and notice at about minus 3 dB, that will be the cutoff frequency, and it's actually minus 3 dB from the maximum. So eventually, when this is all done, we're going to add some cursors. While it's running, the other thing to remind you of is that the channel one signal and the generator output signal must connect to the circuit input and the channel two uh, input on the scope must connect to the circuit output. Otherwise, the Bode plot system will not capture the data correctly. Besides that, all of this information is being captured here. I can actually cycle through all those different points and there's a cursor that lines up when that's happened. But now that it's done, okay, it's stopped and I can get it to repeat continuously or reset it. But what I'm gonna do is come over here and click on this marker table because then I can use the dial, this dial here, the analysis one, to switch between cursor one and cursor two. You actually see a little diamond appearing. So that's cursor two. I'm gonna move it to the left. This is cursor one over here. And I want to find out the difference between the two cursors, and that's coming down here. So I'm going to set cursor one to about the maximum. I'm going to click to cursor two. You see the little diamond appears there. And I'm going to wait until it's three dB less than the maximum. Okay, so the maximum was 0.47. And the difference of minus three dB, what frequency does that happen at? We're very close and almost there so that that's pretty close either one of those will work and it's showing you that the frequency that that happened be careful how you read this because this is the current frequency um or sorry the difference in frequencies but this is the frequency with, that we're at with that number two cursor 12.9 kilohertz and we're about 3 db down from where we started okay and that's the point that we want to look at so for this low pass filter, the FC is 12.9 kilohertz. Hopefully you understand this and you get a little bit more of an explanation in your theory class. Thanks for now. This is a demo of the Bode plotting capability on the Roden Schwartz oscilloscope. So to begin with, I'm gonna actually press the preset button and that brings everything back to a default or a known state. And then I obviously have to turn on the generator and the output of the generator needs to be connected to the input of the circuit, the, the um, high pass filter circuit. And the output needs to be connected to channel two, the input also connected to channel one. Once you have all of that set up, you want to come over to the function generator and turn on the output. 
And if you want, you can turn the dial for channel one so that we get maybe 200 millivolts peak to peak. And now the reason you might not be seeing what you expect here is because of the, the loading is set for 50 ohms. So you're gonna get double what you may expect. Now that we've got that set up, I'm gonna click on the application button. And the application we want to run is Bodiplot. And here, I'm actually gonna move this sine wave screen out of the way to give us more space. And I'm going to turn off phase. You might have to click that twice and then turn it off. And then you set up the starting point, which for us is going to be one kilohertz. The ending point or the stop point is going to be 80 kilohertz. Okay, and the number of points, we're gonna make it 100. Now that we've got that, we can move on. I'm just gonna clear that screen. I think at this point it's ready to run. So click on the run button. And it's now starting to produce the Bode plot. And as I said, channel one and the generator are connected to the input of the high pass filter and channel two is connected to the output. So basically what is happening is the generator is sweeping through a range of frequencies, starting at 1K, ending at 80K and then measuring and plotting the amplitude in dB. Okay. So you see that happening and it levels off because it's a high pass filter. Once it does that, you can actually review all the different points that it's sampled and the gain at those different points. So for example, at the first point, which was one kilohertz, you had a drop of minus 55 dB, so way down here. And then as we moved along, more and more points, it's going up in the curve, a higher frequency, you can see 3.8. And what I'm looking for is I'm gonna go all the way to the top. And an easier way to do that is to use the, the marker. So I'm gonna click on marker number one, and it's highlighted over on the left with a little diamond shaped symbol. And now I can use this dial here to move it back and forth. So I'm actually gonna move one all the way up to around 80 kilohertz. Okay, and you can see that we're there. I'm gonna leave one at that point. So that's my frequency of marker one. This is my gain of marker number one. Now I'm gonna press this button. So just press it. And now we have control of marker number two. And I did it this way so I get minus 3 dB. So what I'm looking for is the difference between marker 1 and marker 2 being minus 3 dB. So we want to look at this number here. So I'm going to turn the dial until we get about minus 3 dB. And that's the cutoff frequency. So we're getting close, minus 2 point, we went a little bit past it. Okay, somewhere in between there and there. Now, if you look at the frequency, this point right here, it's 23.4. That's what I expected for the cutoff frequency of this high pass filter. And one of the things that you can do is you can actually plot this information in Excel by saving the file. So I'm gonna click on save and I'm gonna give it, uh, I think I can change that file name and I'm just gonna put a number two added to that and hit enter. And it saves it to, in this case, my USB drive. So I click on save and then okay. And you can open that in Excel and actually produce uh, the same waveform in Excel. Okay, I think that's about everything. So here's the chart. These are the markers showing the difference. I can change the gain as well. So if I click on this, I can change the gain to be perhaps, mm -hmm. let's say I wanted uh, minus three dB. And then I'd have to bring this down using the vertical adjust. Okay, but it's sh still showing me the minus three dB point from that maximum value at cursor number one. Hopefully all of this helps. Thank you.
so in this example, we're looking at a narrow bandpass filter. So the output is reduced at lower frequencies and higher frequencies, and it allows certain frequencies to pass through. And that's the center frequency. So at marker number one, my center frequency, if you look down here, is 20.9 kilohertz. And the amplifier that we're using has a gain of about uh, 21 dB. But before that frequency and after that frequency, there's a big drop off. And if I want to know the minus 3 dB point before and after that center frequency, I can use the cursors. And right now I have control of that cursor. And the number one marker is at 20.7 dB. So I'm going to see what I'm going to go 3 dB under that. So again, it's 20.57. So we want to go to about 17.57. And that's going to be somewhere in this area here. So that's about the minus 3 dB point. Uh, no, I don't have that right. Sorry. It's minus 3 dB. So let's keep going. We want that bottom number where there's a difference between 1 and 2 to be minus 3. We're getting closer to that now. So I think we're about there. So at... Um, 22 kilohertz that's the minus 3 db point after the center frequency and then if we keep going we're going to find the minus 3 db point before that so we're looking for minus 3 db and that's it right about there which happened at 20.4 kilohertz and those numbers can be used to calculate the quality of this filter but for now, we'll look at that example. And don't forget, all of these pieces of information, the data and this file, in this case, I think there were many, you know, there could have been a thousand in this one, show you all the different data points and you can save it to disk and just give it a, a new name. Maybe I'll call it four and then do enter and save. It saves that file. And that way you can look at it in Excel, you can look at the information, you can plot it within Excel, and so on. Okay, hopefully this example helps out when you have to use these, this instrument in the lab. Thank you. In this last example, we're actually going to use the oscilloscope this time to measure that corner frequency of a low pass filter. And I'm going to start off by turning on the generator and I just press the generator button. I'm going to set the frequency to two kilohertz since it's a low pass filter and we want to start off with its maximum value at the output. And on my actual circuit, I have the generator connected to the input of the circuit and I also have channel one connected to the input of the circuit. And secondly, the output of the circuit is connected to channel two on the scope. So that's my hardware configuration. And uh, I may add a picture to show you that. But to start with, let's turn on the generator. So we've got it set up for 250 millivolts, two kilohertz, and I turn it on. And you'll see you're getting a waveform there, but let's adjust the uh, volts per division. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Okay, and you can see it's going up 125 and down 125 millivolts, which makes sense for our amplitude setting. And I'm also going to adjust the frequency scale or the horizontal scale. So I get a few more signals on the screen of the oscilloscope. Now that I've got all of that set up, I'm actually going to turn on the second channel, which is the output. Okay, so that turns on the second channel and you can see the output there. Now they're at different settings. One's at 50 millivolts per division and the other's at 500. So what I'm going to do is shift one signal up and the other signal down and give them uh, the same amplitude. So to start with, click on the channel one button. Okay, and uh, I want to get the menu. So I have it here and I'm going to go to position. And I want to have this go up by two divisions. So basically you just click on that 
and say two divisions and it's going to be positive. Let's try it again, two, and then hit enter. That's going to go up two and I'm going to go to channel two. You can see I've selected channel two. I'm going to go to the position, double click on it and put uh, two and then minus. So it's going to go down two positions when I hit enter. And then I'm going to set both channels so they're measuring the same amplitude. And I'm going to set channel one to 100 millivolts per division. So I'm going to have to adjust this dial or I could type it in. Let's type it in. That's a quick way as well. So 100 millivolts per division, another zero and hit enter. Oh, I must have t typed in something wrong. Yes, I didn't put millivolts in front. So 100 and make sure you put millivolts in front and there we're okay. I want to do the same thing for channel two. So I select channel two and you can see it's channel two now. And we're also going to put in 100 millivolts per division there. So make sure I get this right. 100 and then milli. And so both channels are reading about the same value. So what we're going to notice with this low pass filter is that at low frequencies, the input and the output signal should be about the same. But as we move to a higher frequency, we're going to get a reduced amplitude at the output. And we can tell when we're at the minus 3 dB point because the amplitude will be about 70% less. But before we do any of that, let's set up some measurements. So we're going to click on the button that says measurements. And um, we're, we have a couple of measurement places. So I'm going to measure on channel one, measurement place one. We're going to go to uh, vertical measurements and select RMS. So it's telling me the value of the yellow one, 83 millivolts RMS. And then I'm also going to put it in a second place, number two. Okay, and we're going to go to channel two. We can select the green one, and we're also going to measure RMS cycle. Okay, notice that this one's a little greater value than this one because it's an output and there's amplifiers. So the gain isn't exactly... Uh, one, it could be a little bit less or a little bit more, but we're going to work with the output. So if I take that output RMS value, which in this case is about 93 millivolts, let's round it to 93 millivolts and multiply it by 0.707. That's the minus three dB point. Okay. So if I do that on my calculator, I'm just going to type, uh, the 93. So I did the calculations and 93 millivolts times 0 0.707 gives me 65 millivolts. So what I'm going to look for is when I adjust the frequency, at what frequency does that cause the output to drop by minus 3 dB? Okay, so the next thing I have to do is select the generator. So here's the generator. I'm going to click on where it says frequency. And once you've done that, then you're just going to adjust this dial here to, to go through a range of frequencies. So right now it's at two kilohertz and I'm going to turn it clockwise. So obviously the shape of the sine wave is changing. We're going to a higher frequency, but what's important to monitor is this value right here. I'm looking for the frequency at which this value goes down to 65 millivolts. Where does that happen? So I'm going to keep turning the dial. And the higher the frequency I get, the lower that voltage will be. So it's, but it's going to hit kind of that sweet spot, which is the minus three dB. Okay. It's going down. Okay. Very slightly. Yeah. It actually might've went up a little bit there, but it will go down there. It's noticeably going down now. Uh, and we're at uh, nine kilohertz, 10 kilohertz. Now we're dropping. Okay, and I think I went beyond that point. So I'm looking for 65 millivolts. That's 66, and it doesn't have to be super precise. And the more you go uh, higher in frequency, the lower that number will be. Okay, I'm okay with that number there. That's, that's pretty close. 
okay? And that happened at, um, let's say, 13.6 kilohertz. Maybe we'll go a little higher. It's, it can be kind of tricky. So that was about 13 kilohertz. So that's the corner frequency for this low pass filter. And this is a second way to do it using the oscilloscope. And uh, while, while we're at this point here, one other thing that you can do is we have a capability of doing something called sweep. And I'm gonna click on sweep. And uh, since we, knew, we know we're at about uh, 13 kilohertz, I'm gonna sweep through a range of frequencies starting at 10 kilohertz and going to 15 kilohertz because I know my minus 3 dB point is in between those two frequencies. So I'm going to go in between those two frequencies, 15K, and we're going to do it, we're going to do it in 10 seconds. Okay, I think the maximum time is 10 seconds. So now we'll go back and we have to turn on the sweep. Okay, and you can see it's kind of automatically doing what we did manually. And you can look for that 65. Well, one of the things that's going to make it a little bit easier here is to actually add another measurement. So I'm going to go to measurements. I'm going to put it in the third position right here. And the measurement is going to be the frequency of channel one. And there's the frequency. So now I'm seeing the frequency. So it's sweeping through that range of frequencies. It's back at 10. So look at the frequency when it gets to 65, right about there. So it was about 13, I think, around 13 kilohertz. So this is kind of doing it automatically. So it's, it's another method, but the, the two others are probably better. The FFT and the Bode plot are better for measuring that FC. Hopefully this helps. Thank you.